Welcome back to the news at 10. The United Bank for Africa Foundation has announced the commencement of the 2017 edition of the annual National Essay Competition for Senior Secondary School Students in Nigeria. The competition, which is aimed at improving the intellectual and writing skills of students, will award the winners with educational grants to study in any African university of their choice. The experience of five years came from a good reading culture is essential for every student when acquiring knowledge. It is for this reason that the UBA Foundation, the corporate social responsibility arm of the United Bank for Africa, is announcing the commencement of the 2017 edition of the annual national essay competition. Students like, like, like yourselves who are eager and keen to learn and to increase your knowledge power. So we're, we're, we're believing that what we're doing today would hopefully, hopefully lead to achieving that. The organizers say the program is carried out across Africa and is also aimed at equipping the students with the right knowledge so they can develop their countries and the continent as a whole. The impact is more than just a scholarship to the one person who wins or the three people or the other kids who get computers to be able to do their work uh, more effectively. The impact is much wider than that. It's a ripple effect and we want to see it grow. The competition, which is a follow-up on the Foundation's Read Africa initiative, encourages students of senior secondary schools in Nigeria to participate by writing on different essay topics as winners get educational grants to study in any African university of their choice. If you're going to go outside the shores of Africa, it's, you're not qualified to enter into this competition because we want to give African children an opportunity they would not normally have. The students say they're happy about the opportunity. It will help us to broaden the way we think and it is also an opportunity to ease the stress of our parents. If I, I win this competition, I have the chance to go to a university without paying any money because they has given me the opportunity with the scholarship. This initiative started since 2011, gives students a chance to be creative and in the long run be a part of their education's funding. The UBA Foundation hopes that this year more students will challenge themselves so they can also benefit from it. Now, since the government started harping on the importance of diversifying the economy, public and private concerns have been turning to their, their attention to generating income from non-oil sources. Today, Fidelity Bank, Lagos Business School and the Nigeria Export Promotion Council have taken this goal a step further with the launch of an export management program to ensure the production and sale of export-worthy products. Officials of the Lagos Business School, Fidelity Bank and Nigeria Export Promotion Council, as well as the fifth set of students in the export management program at Lagos Business School, walk into the hall. Having graduated four sets of students, they feel it's time to blow the trumpet about this method of generating personal and national revenues. The goal of EMP basically is to provide impactful world-class export management education to Nigerian SMEs, MSMEs, in such a way that they will be able to compete effectively in the global arena. For Fidelity Bank, Lagos Business School, which has two outstanding international recognitions, and the Export Promotion Council are the perfect partners for the project. Whatever any business is doing should not just uh, provide profit, but also provide something that will change uh, the social level of the community in which the people are. It's one gap that we are filling, do not at the speed we want it, but at least it's slow and steady. Graduates are assured of the necessary support to get their export enterprise off the ground. You have the Export Stimulation Facility, the ESF, which is a um, 500 billion debenture stock. The handlers just love the eye-opener their program is to the students. 
the wow expression on the faces of students when you hit a very critical point that they perhaps thought it never ever happened before. But we take them to understand what are the compliance and the regulatory requirement in the country where is wishing to export. The export management program is an intense one-week engagement. It has been running for a year and has graduated four classes in that time. Let's take a look at some business news now. Here's Melinda Hakinlami. You first. First Bank. Many thanks, Ijoma. Welcome to Business News. The Debt Management Office today raised over 200 billion naira, almost double the amount it initially sought at a bond auction as local and foreign investors were looking for longer term debt to look to get higher returns. The DMO had offered 135 billion naira worth of bonds maturing in 2021, 2027 and 2037, but up the numbers after total demand rose to 394.8 billion naira. The debt office hinted that the country's first 100 billion naira sovereign sukuk issued last week was oversubscribed by more than 5.8%. The central bank today announced plans to sell 130.37 billion naira worth of treasury bills at an auction on October the 4th. The financial regulator says it will offer 28.69 billion naira in the three-month paper, 33.49 billion naira in the six-month bill, and 68.18 billion naira in the one-year note. Results of the auction are expected to be announced on the same day. The CBN issues Treasury bills twice a month to help finance government's budget deficit, manage liquidity and check money supply. The high political risk consideration of the private sector investing in Nigeria's infrastructure under a public-private partnership arrangement has been identified as a key factor against the potentials of attractive returns. This is according to the country director of Jeff and O'Brien, Mr. Pascal Odibo, while speaking on the concept of corporate tax credit for infrastructure funding on our business bonding program. It is very pivot, but still on integrity. Because if this is, if that, if people respect contracts across ad administrations, it means that investors are going to have a lot much more confidence. That's what is called political risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a company that is a, a company that is owned and it's a firm that is owned by the AU and the IFC, an international firm. It called Africa Trade Insurance. They are in, domiciled in Kenya. They have about eight countries, and uh, Nigeria just signed on. Nigeria yet has not paid their um, treaty money. That, what they do essentially is to enhance credits. In other words, they can ensure projects and transactions trade uh, against political risk. Political risk is when we are not sure of your government. Some company news now. The board of Lafarge Africa have announced plans to merge two of its subsidiaries, United Cement Company of Nigeria and Atlas Cement Company Limited. Lafarge Africa explains that it has notified the Nigerian Stock Exchange of the proposed merger and received the Securities and Exchange Commission's blessings in principle to the scheme of merger, while an application will be submitted to the Federal High Court to convene a meeting for shareholders in the three companies. In the meantime, the company says it will raise 131.65 billion naira by way of rights issues at 42.5 naira per share by issuing five new shares for every nine shares held by investors. Price recovery, especially from Dangote Cement, pulled the all share index back into the green at the close of today's trading session after a two day slide. Let's join Chimedi Obiwagu for the picture of today's activities. Welcome to the Stock Market Report. The multi-million cross deals that played out on Nigerian equities market on Tuesday fizzled out today after the central bank decided to hold all rates at previous levels. Overall positive sentiment from the new cycle around Lafarge Africa's major plans rally industrial giants like rival Dangote Cement, pushing the subsector higher by 0.79%. The general market index finished a decent 0.44% gain. However, 
Transaction volume and value declined to 132.4 million shares and 1.2 billion naira, respectively. At the close of Bell, 24 stocks posted gains led by Champion Breweries, which advanced by 8.14%, while 22 companies posted declines led by Morrison Industries. Traders expect a more active session on Thursday. And that was the stock market report. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. It's a fairly positive close for most of the world's major stock markets today as investors eye higher interest rates and the release of highly anticipated details on the tax reform framework in the United States. Let's take a look at the numbers. That's business news. It's back to you, Joma. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Melinda. The All Progressives Grand Alliance has held a meeting of key stakeholders of a party in Oka and Ambra State towards the November the 18th governorship elections. The governor, Willy Obiano, seized the opportunity to charge the 326 ward chairman to work towards preserving the successes of the party. The light is green to rally support for the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA, in Anambra State, who gather in Amobia, Oka South Local Government Area, for a meeting of the executive stakeholders of the party, including the governor, Mr. Willy Obiano. <laughs> Songs of Solidarity welcome Governor Obiano to the meeting, and he expresses his optimism on the outcome of the elections. Coming from the 326 wards of, of Anambra State, you know, these are the ward leaders. You know, uh, on the 2nd of October, you see them with their youth leader, with the woman leader, and many more people that you see. These are people that win the election. So you can see how happy they are, very energized. So I don't have a problem. I know that the, uh, it's going to be a landslide victory for, for me on that day, and they've taken this battle as their personal battle. The national chairman of the party, says the meeting is key to keeping the grassroots leaders in the loop of the strides of the government for proper campaigning. Everybody here has seen what the government is doing in his community. Is it not true? Is it not true? Your Excellency, what you are seeing here, community projects in Anambra South. All the communities are here. Central are here. Not here, but central. A session of prayers for the governor kicks in, and party stalwarts convey confidence reignited on the record of the party. The past 11 and a half years that Abga have been in Anambra State, Anambra State has been adjudged as the safest state in the country. Anambra State is undergoing industrialization. Things are working in this state. And we don't want anybody to come here and mess it up for us. The purpose of meetings such as this is securing victory at the November 18th Anambra State Governorship election. Ahead on the news at 10, Nigeria Basketball Federation lifts the definite sanctions imposed on Dodden Warriors, Lagos Islanders and Union Bank. That's on sports. Please stay with us. <laughs>